Well, hello. So today I'm going to be talking about darter tetras, or more specifically, the Charisidium fasciatum, or the banded darter tetra. So these were first described in 1866. However, there's still a lot of confusion surrounding this species. The reason being is Charisidium fasciatum actually includes more than one species. They are a monophyletic group, meaning that unless newly identified, most published records of Charisidium have been attributed to fasciatum. So for well over a century, most darter tetras have been called fasciatum. So it's basically more like an umbrella term covering many different species. Uh, however, in 2015, there were three separate studies came out identifying up to 60 different species of darter tetras. However, this has not really become mainstream and most darter tetras are still exported as fasciatums or the banded darter tetra. So darter tetras can be found all over Brazil, Paraguay, from deep into the jungle, all the way out to coastal tributaries, uh, which means they're very undemanding of water parameters. Basically, any tropical aquarium setup would be just fine for them. That being said, they would appreciate a couple weeks, two to four weeks a year in cooler water, um, down as low as 60 degrees. So basically, all you have to do, maybe like every December, just unplug the heater, let it uh, get room temperature for a couple weeks, and then plug it back in and uh, they'll be good to go. It's it's that easy. Size-wise, adults can get around two to three inches, and while they are a social species and can even be seen schooling on occasion, the males can be kind of territorial. Uh, once established in the aquarium, they will create their own little territories, so you don't want to keep a large amount of these in a smaller aquarium. So you don't want like a group of 20 in a 20 gallon aquarium. You want around 10, maybe a dozen most at 20 gallons. Now I realize they're not the most colorful fish out there, but their behavior more than makes up for it. Darters, they're, they're just extremely curious fish and they're always inspecting, always looking around, cruising around. They, they perch up on their uh, large pectoral fins and they kind of kind of just scope out the place. And they're one of the few fish in the world that can actually move their head, which is pretty crazy. So they're really quite fascinating. An aquarium full of these goofballs will not disappoint you. Feeding, again, very easy. They love live foods, frozen foods. However, they'll gladly accept flakes or any prepared food. Uh, but I would definitely recommend giving them a treat of live or frozen as often as possible, a couple times a week. As far as tank mates go, they'll do well with any peaceful community fish. Uh, they do spend a majority of their time on the bottom third of the aquarium, so keep that in mind. You know, we kind of get the uh, the bottom dwellers, the mid the mid schoolers, and then you know your hatchet fish up top. That would be great for these fish. So overall, a very undemanding, simple to take care of fish that will not disappoint you. You will love this fish, I guarantee it. Uh, I'll put a link down below to Dan's fish if you want to check them out uh, any further. And uh, I believe he still has a couple in stock. They're gonna go fast, so if you want some, get them quick. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, species profile, and I'll see you all in the next video.